Hello, welcome back to Two Guys from Rejoice. I'm Adam. Well, I'm Steve. We're back again. Uh, tonight we're we're going to review a little bit what we've been uh, praying for. And so this week, or this this uh, spring, I guess, we're working through 100 days of prayer. Today's day number 25. And it's really an interesting verse that Steve included in that. Uh, Matthew 9.38 says, So pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. And so a question that comes up there, right, a couple of them, is what's the harvest? Yep. Who are the workers? And why, and why is that important? Why do we need more of them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, well, the harvest, yeah, I think, I think it, it, there's several verses in Scripture, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. But I think it goes back to Jesus' parable of the wheat and the tares, that they grow up together. He saw the world and, that, and presented that to people to help them understand the idea that people are like a harvest. And the, the worst thing that can happen with a harvest is that it goes bad in the field. You know, if, it, if, the, if the grain or whatever it is is ripe, you want to use it. You want it to, to, to fulfill the purpose it was grown for. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way Jesus, I think, in this verse is picturing the world. It even says you look on the fields. They're white to harvest. They're ready to harvest. But the labors are few. And then he says, pray and ask the Lord of the harvest to send more workers. And so whenever we think about that in terms of being a Christian, right, those, those are the folks that uh, have either have accepted uh, Christ or uh, are willing to. Uh, and they need someone to tell them about it, right? That, that's the reason that the workers are important. Uh, you know, we, we read in Romans, right, that, that faith comes by hearing, hearing from the Word of God. But how can people believe in something they haven't heard? And how can they heard unless, hear unless it's preached? And how can they preach unless somebody sends them, right? The, the idea there is... As Christians, we are tasked with, we are, are commanded to tell other people about him, to be disciples that make disciples. Yeah. And so this week, one of the things that, that we'd like to encourage is, where is it that you need to harvest? Where is it, what, what does that field look like for you? It, it looks a little different for each of us. We have different talents, we have different uh, different uh, you know, relationships and friendships and, and family. Uh, we have different jobs. We have different places where we are best equipped to help, uh, to tell other people about him. Yeah, and when you think about it, it the field, the Bible says, is white. It, there, think about how many thousands, perhaps millions of people a day that leave this life and go out into eternity without Jesus. They're like that that crop that's just rotting in the field. And it's a shame, right? you know, the, the, the waste. And that, I think, is Jesus' point here. And one of the things I think is important, that we are to pray and ask God to send more workers. Right now, we live in a day where there are fewer and fewer young people going into ministry. Mm -hmm. But it, it's not even about that. I think it's, we're Christians, we bought into the lie that, well, religion is a personal thing. And so I, I, I have to be careful about sharing it, or maybe I just need to keep it myself. And that flies right in the face of what the scriptures and what Jesus intends from this verse. Pray to the Lord of harvest that he would send more workers. By the way, I don't think I should pray for him to send more workers unless I'm willing to be one of those workers. Absolutely. I, I think it's wrong for me to pray for God to send somebody else to do something I'm not willing to do. One of the things that was a staggering statistic uh, to me, I saw it uh, just today. Uh, there's been you know, quite a bit of research done, and they did a, a study, a survey of people that are in church, and 51% of them have never heard of the Great Commission. If you happen to be one of those 51%, I want you to know Jesus said that we are to go into all the world and make disciples. That's it, five times. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them everything he's commanded us, and he's going to be with us. In all four Gospels and in Acts 1-8, he tells us that's what our task is. That's why we're here. So I don't know exactly where your field is, but I know what it looks like. I know where your mission field starts. Wherever your feet are, the next yeah. time you talk to somebody that doesn't know him, that's where your mission field starts. And that's the thing. It's not a matter of being called. Jesus called us five times. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of location. That's all it is finding out where God wants me to do that. And so an encouragement and a challenge. 
Where is your mission field and where is it this week? Where is it tomorrow? Where is it that you know someone who needs to hear the message of the gospel and be faithful to be a disciple that makes disciples? Amen. 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 And we pray to the Lord of the harvest. Let's pray this week and ask you to send more workers into the harvest. Thanks.